I saw a guy posting that um, you should look at the daily chart because there's more pips on it. Yeah, there's a 900 or roughly 800 pip bounce in the euro dollar here. We bounced off this um, 105. We're almost back to 115. So we made it to, you know, 114 and a half. So that's where we're sitting right now. And um, so it's been a it's been a classic pattern, and of course, hindsight's 2020. And um, but who can see it coming, right? All you had to do was draw a trend line on close, but not on high and low. Uh, when you see people draw trend lines on high and low, it's as if they drew their trend lines on a tick chart or a five-minute chart compressed. So if I if I go to a four-hour chart from this is the daily chart. And when I do this, it's going to scramble it, right? Now I have to zoom way out to get the same structure. Now, this is almost a typical chart for people to post is the whole, literally the whole drama of this currency. But I don't think it really matters too much if you're trying to make uh, 50 pips or 5 pips or even 200 pips. It doesn't really so much matter if you're trying to make that. Um, because here's, here's the daily. So what, is, what does all that mean? And, and I saw a guy ask on a, on a forum, oh, gee, who's got the best historical data? I, you know, if you're going to pull the trigger once every six months, all right, you know, you're going to want to know when that euro gets to 105. You're like, yeah, it's kind of good. I'm about 300 pips stop and that poppy and walk away. Now, I got here is 100 pips stop. All those dotted horizontals are 100 pips. So... You know, here's the here's the four hour, and as you drill through these time frames, you have to ask yourself: Is it what which what, what time frame am I going to trade? And even at that, I'm still going down to here. Because okay, so all these other lines just aren't going to matter a hill of beans. Because for me personally, this is the whole trading day exists right in here. These are all the trades, and these are just uh, this is kind of no brainer trading in here. Now you want to get into stuff like, um, you know, here's the weekly. Wow. Well, yeah, sure, it's in a downtrend on the weekly. I should probably 50, uh, 50 period moving average on this thing. I'm sure it's going to look like this. I mean, you'll see some guy post, oh, you're always in a downtrend, <laughs> obviously. Uh, it just retraced about 800 pips. So could you have bought that? Sure, why not? Right. Here was your, um, you made a, you know, you made it. This is your bottom you're projecting off of. Are we going to make it back up to this other price? Definitely, you know. Definitely going to attempt it, right? Um, you know, another guy's another guy posted, "Oh, you know, those trajectory lines don't mean a thing, really." Well, the market is ex the market's t totally in shock when it when it moves like when it moves that hard down. It's there's, it's like a natural phenomenon. It's like, uh, does the market bounce? Absolutely. Can it bounce higher than it went down? Absolutely. I mean, who hasn't dropped something and had it splash back at you so far, hit you in the face? You're thinking, really? That was, God, I just didn't drop it. Um, yeah, because it's the way it hits. And uh, so, yeah, sure, why not? Now, in the in the in the weekly view, um, take this trend line and copy it. And uh, got to cue it up to the close, though. You wouldn't want to draw it like this. You see people draw it like that, but it doesn't. This doesn't work. And um, now you're gonna find the lowest uh, and hang it there, right? And then you're gonna find the next uh, peak, and you're gonna hang it there. So now it's a valid line. See, this bottom became a top, and uh, if you're placing orders right here, you're getting filled, and then some, right? If you don't, and you're not getting stopped out. So your order placement is based on the closing price. You can fine tune it, it take it out on another time frame. So you're always entering a close, always. I mean, this is what candles are doing. You wouldn't have a bullish candle unless it was closing up and down. But all the zigzags and all the important information is in the fact that when they, at the end of the day. That's always a great cliche. At the end of the week, this bottom becomes a top. So, you know, obviously, um, you want to sell here at the end of the week.
But then you would say, well, look, it went higher and it stopped me out. Okay, well, then you could always put your sell stop below there and risk even more. If you sell here and you turn on the um, 100 pip grid, you can see that, uh, see you had an order here. Sure, you got a 100 pip stop on that puppy, right? Or you sold right here on close, which is actually up a little bit off of the round handle. And amazingly, it closed a little bit up right there. So, and uh, you can't see it unless you, now if you turn the candles on, yeah, it's, it's a mess. And uh, so let's turn, let's turn everything off. Just turn turn off the wicks. Right? So you turn off the wicks, you turn off the bars here, you can turn them on and off by going from line chart to here. So you always want to draw everything in this level here. And it just looks so childishly easy to trade at this point and to do all your projections. So next week, um, yeah, the, the sell, you definitely want to sell this price at 122. Okay, but let's, let's, let's go in for a little tighter view. That's the weekly, and obviously um, you would want to buy if it ever came back to this. Right? But that's 200 pips away. I mean, I, mean, I want to make money right now, and I don't want to wait that long. So here was the entry. Um, let me just delete all this stuff because now all these things don't make sense for the market now. And here was this window in here that it jumps through because that happens to be at 100 and uh, that's a dollar ten. And at a dollar ten, I think everybody psychologically, once the market starts to move up a dollar ten and goes to dollar oh whatever, people are like, you know what, it's going to a, a buck eleven, like it's going to slam there, and it does. It doesn't spend any time in this dollar to a dollar eleven window. It's this foregone conclusion, you know. I turn on the uh, the range, and you can see you didn't even dip into that range. You didn't even get a wick become a uh, top bottom inside that so obviously we're going up and I'm selling into this thing um, on Sunday I'll be selling at this bottom on the daily and I'm gonna I'm, this is my my next scalp window so I believe that the market's gonna enter a scalp window that's um, up in here like this. Now I'm going to go to the four hour, and on this I'm going to have to zoom out one level because now I'm only worried about. Let me just zoom back. Yeah. So I'm only worried about is the current projections and where my orders are going to go, and it's quite a bit of order placement to reduce your risk. So um, it's one thing to say, oh, it goes up there, I'm going to sell. Another thing to place all those orders and go through the tedium of, so I'm going to break out this channel guy and I'm going to build my uh, channel to the future and I'm going to copy that. So everything's off of close. There's no no um, wicks, no shadows. And then hold on the control key while you're holding on to that. Copy it over. This also lets you validate that this is a valid um, cadence to this uh, market when the market goes through a um, an explosion now you can zoom out and see if it keys up so it keys off this double bottom here you don't need a Gartley you don't need a fib you don't need all that garbage you can have it on there if it, if it's a feel it makes you feel better right but it's just f pure feeling the truth is is that um, right now it's you could say it's overbought so where's where are the sellers going to come in? They should come along in along this, the top of this channel, but they're going to bob in and out. You're going to make money by placing orders, like for instance here, at this bottom. You're getting in here. It's very tight. Um, so you have this is 100 pips on each of these dotteds. And your order would have been to buy the retest of this. It's that simple. You have a, a 
buy limit here. Or if you wanted to be riskier, you could put a buy stop above um, this um, guy here. But you kind of got to jump on it because it closed up there and then it's on its way. Or you put a buy stop above this, which is too risky for my, my uh, taste. And then you have to put a uh, sell stop here if you're wrong. So you're risking about 80 pips. Whereas if you put a 20 pip stop in, or a various like 30, 20, just a whole array in here, you would have uh, an entry, say here, that doesn't get filled, but you have another order here. So you have a, you have a cluster of orders spanning, say, 40 pip range. And some of these are break evens, and some of these are. Uh, better than that and better than that would be to make um, so you're risking this say this is like say 20 pips and here is your take profit zone it's gonna say this much right so you definitely cleared that even if you got in on the stop entry which is kind of scary because the, technically they they stopped you out if you got it in this fractal and I saw Bill Williams do this once, and I just said to him, why aren't you getting in at the other turn? You know, Of course, how thin are you going to slice it, right? Because this, this is the four hour, so I definitely want to place orders here again. All over again, you reload the, um, reload the gun. So here's my buy zones. I'm going to get a 1350-ish, right? May not, may not come back there, but... You're just going to place an order there just the same because you could, uh, you typically come back to this uh, top, um, top, and then this is the big, the big high drama breakout, and it would break this channel temporarily because it's still in the four-hour chart here. So you can make the the trade wind speculation that this is the counter trend. Uh, this peak here it's taken out and this is the pace at which you're counter trending and when this um, for instance this was the uh, counter trend off this top came down a channel here kind of have to draw a channel there but this is the way the market's marching up and it's coming back to previous so yeah I mean definitely I'm a buyer from here all the way down of course it's got to get there in a certain period of time this is a four hour so can we get to here that'd be great i buy it buy low sell high you know buy a 12. inside here you've got scalps you never ever i mean i don't know who's ever ever just placing perfect trades every trade is um you know your perfect entry target because you know people are waiting for this thing to come back it may never come back and in Forex, a market can just take off like a rape date and just keep going. There's nothing. So I'm selling along the way, too, when it climaxes into this top. So you, you have to put, I'm putting order clusters up in, in this area. But it's really, um, well, I'm going to wait for the opening. Now, this is a little bit less risky here. You go to the one hour. You can obviously see this double bottom with the um, you know this window here this double bottom they come in they grab the shorts rip it north and this is pure auction right here even took even when I took out that level came into this this area here but this this a lot easier to connect these dots than it is to have this on sure you can put that on for to kind of back test your entry you're actually looking at the uh, like look at this window here and really take a look at that crazy now a lot of this is this fooled a lot of people oh it's going up it's going down yeah we'll turn on the range there and just see how absolute now when it comes down to a narrow bar we're getting close to the entry but certainly gonna be buying here and if we don't if we do a free fall in here this is a rich buying area and the selling area is obviously at 115 just kind of stupid just above 115 for for scalps and for a pullback into what would be the last known high right there